Okay, guys, still getting started here. <clears throat> Trying to get the monitor up. We're just waiting for some gesso to dry right here. <clears throat> hey, Dorothy. Oh, you know what? I got this new stand for my monitor. It blows. <laughs> I don't know how to say it any nicer. It just blows. Alright, there we go. Alright, you know what? We need to make a little adjustment in the microphone. Can you guys hear me okay? Let's do a sound check. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, I was afraid of that. All right, guys, how about now? Can you hear me better? Can you guys hear me better now? I think I'll invest in a new boom mic. <laughs> To, uh, maybe I'll get a new new mic next week sometime. I, th I thought I had a Bluetooth mic that I could use, but I, I don't see it around. So, all right, let me do my sh let me share these over, and we'll get rocking here. We're gonna paint a really little pretty little forest scene. Sometime before the end of this video, we're gonna give this painting away. So stay around, find out how to get this painting. It's called what is this called? Out here. It's one of my 2016 paintings. So we'll be giving that away. And then we'll paint another, we're gonna paint another mountain painting. This one's gonna be kind of in portrait mode. Just so it's just about dry. I, I could fire it up and use uh, my heat gun to dry it, but I don't really like to do that too much if I don't have to. All right, let's get some things shared over here. Thanks to Sonny D and John Kenward and John Conley and Brandon and Little Painter Girl, all those people who use my uh, allow me to um, share into their groups. It's very kind of you. We're gonna do a wet on wet painting today in oils. If you didn't catch my video on how to make liquid clear uh, a few minutes earlier, then. Check that out. It's, it's a short video because it don't take long to make it. Um, so, you know. All right, did I get everybody, I think? Where's Peter's group? There it is. Okay. All right, we're good to go. All right. Okay, so this is just about dry. I don't want to get started too early on this because if I do, the gesso is not going to be dry and it's going to smear. I'll tell you what. I think I will take the heat gun to it because I don't want to keep you guys waiting. So hang on a second. Let me put the mic down. Things are in a little bit of a disarray because we're in the process of remodeling the studio. We're putting a new drawing table and stuff in. We built a new light table as well. So I'm going to kind of double the size of the studio which will be nice. All right, let's do this. Excuse me for the noise for a minute. This is just black gesso. Make this myself. Pretty easy to do. There's a video in my library about how to do it. We're gonna need that dark background when we get into this. So we're gonna do a, kind of a forest painting today, kind of standing in a, or away from, into a deep forest. And it's gonna be kind of more or less based on a Bob Ross painting that I saw, I don't know, when did I see it? A couple years ago, I guess it was. Oh, I, for, I remembered to bring my drink. Oh, oh, that's good. All right, <laughs> let's get some liquid white to start with. We're gonna put liquid white up here on this part. And that's really just to uh, make the canvas nice and slick up there. And then we're going to come back and we're going to put some 
regular oil paint down here, but you won't be able to see it probably early on because it's just going to serve to give us a background color. But we'll, we'll put it on there anyway. So if you want to paint along with this, Emily Jean, hey gal. Emily Jean, the little painter girl. She's awesome. If you don't follow her channel, you're cheating yourself, man. She's <laughs> so much talent. She can she does paintings that are magnificent. She does I don't know what you call it. Pyro pyro art. She burns does wood burning stuff. And that's just like amazing. The stuff that she can do. And she makes pendants and she paints like in the small, like John Kenward does. She paints in the small some things and she paints larger paintings than I do most of the time. Working in acrylics, she's she's just amazing. Alright, so this this is gonna start off looking kind of weird. We're gonna be kind of free with the brush today. Make it kind of kind of strange when we get started. Because I want kind of a little bit of a model back model background. Let us see, I've still picked up a little bit of that gesso. That's okay, it won't make no difference. It won't make no difference. Right. I missed a spot. Alright, now, we're just going to smooth this out. Can you guys hear me okay now? Pyrography. I knew it was pyro something. I just couldn't remember what you told me that like when we first met, but pyrography. All right, we're just going to kind of rough this edge up just a little bit. All right, we're just going to clean the brush, with some odorless paint thinner. So, you know, it, it was always handy for me when I was first learning to paint. This is my. Um, I just I just graduated from my. Junior year of painting, my third year of painting, and I'm going into my fourth. And I was always wondering, like, what do people do about, and then just pick a topic. What kind of knives do they like? What kind of brushes do they like? Um, this has been the coolest uh, little brush cleaner thing I think I found. It's a, it's a Pyrex glass canister. It's got a vacuum shut lid on it, so it just keeps it, keeps it all nice, closed, and tight. It's glass, so, you know, it's pretty, pretty easy to keep clean as far as... I mean, you don't really keep it clean very often, but it's got a little Bob Ross brush scrubber in the bottom. Works works good, lasts a long time. I used to use uh, some plastic buckets, but they tend to eventually, uh, you know, it just kind of it just kind of does my, you know, it kind of starts to weaken the structure after a while. All right, so we got that part kind of where we want it for the moment. We're gonna. We're going to do something really cool up there in a minute, but let's get some color here on the palette. Let's get some sap green. A pretty, pretty good healthy bit of sap green on there. And let's get some, let's get some Payne's Gray. Put a pretty good bit of that on the palette today. Especially since I'm thinking about doing a couple of paintings, maybe. Two, two totally different kinds of paintings. Let's get some burnt umber. Uh, I can see some burnt umber up there in the forest. We'll need that up there. Maybe some... Let's get some... Uh, Van Dyke Brown. Put some of that in there. And let's get some... Hmm, let's get some alizarin crimson. Oh, speaking of that, I thought I'd show you guys this. Um, these are the Bob Ross paints of old, these little plastic tubes. These are the new Bob Ross paints. They come in metal tubes. That's pretty snazzy. I, I haven't checked the quality of the paint yet. I will shortly, though, as you can see my... This is, I'm down to my last lizard and crimson here, so... <laughs> I had to buy another one. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Don. Good, 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 Emily. Good, good, good. Thank you. All right, so we'll put some alizarin crimson on there. What else are we gonna need? What else might we need? Let's put some, uh, let's put a, I don't know if I need yellow ochre. 
Yeah, let's get some yellow ochre. We'll put that. We have a pretty full palette today. Not a very limited palette. Usually I work with a pretty limited palette, but I think today I feel kind of. And let's use some of this uh, cad yellow. We'll use some of that as far as tree branches and stuff, maybe. Maybe some grass. Maybe we'll do a water, a little bit of a waterfall or something. All right. So let's just gonna start off with. Let's take some. Uh, let's just take some Van Dyke brown and some sap green together. Let's mix that together. I don't need a whole lot of that. I'm just gonna take this Van Dyke brown, mix it on the brush here. Van Dyke brown, sap green. We're just gonna kind of cover this. Cover this edge. We're just putting some color down so we can come back and when we start to bring our colors in, you know, we'll have all that dark, that dark in there that we want. It's a nice dark kind of grayish color. Grayish green. And we'll get a little bit more sap green to that. Yeah, we'll just mix that on the brush. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. Alright, just a little bit more, a little bit more sap green, a little more brown. corner. Yeah, so we're going to put a, yeah, this would be pretty. So we'll kind of do something kind of Bob Rossi here. Let's see what we get. All right, I don't know if you guys can see too much of that yet, but yeah, we'll get good coverage. So, so we put a slicking, a slicking medium up here with liquid white. Down here we've just put oil paint, which is also going to make it, make the canvas more slick than it would be if it was dry, but we didn't put a medium on there. We could have, but yeah, I didn't feel like it, so <laughs> I didn't want to. Um, it'll probably, it would just add another layer that I have to blend into later, and I don't really know if I really wanted to do that. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna clean that brush. I'm just gonna set it aside. And I think we will scoop up some Payne's Gray. Hey, Bobby. Did I say hi to everybody? I haven't said hi to you. Bye, Sammy. Hey, Rekka. Hey, Gene. All right, so we've just got a regular 16 by 20 canvas in portrait mode. I'm gonna go do something like in a deep, 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 deep forest. So let's pick up some Payne's Gray. Pick up a pretty good bit of Payne's Gray. And let's just kind of, we're gonna just kind of let the brush be kind of free, right? So we're just gonna kind of, I don't think I need a little bit more Payne's Gray in that. Not really any particular pattern. Not really looking for anything in particular pattern-wise. Pick up some of that brown and pull it up into this color. Matter of fact, let's just throw a little brown in here. Maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson. Not too much. You don't have to make it crazy. There we go. That's good. So we're just kind of blending this out in the, in the medium. Let's go back to the gray. Yeah, it's nice and dark. I like that. We're just creating this modeled, kind of a modded, modeled background. Kind of move the brush around at random to kind of just make some spots. Some spots of coverage. I want to get this edge kind of dark. I want the edges to be down to dark. Oh boy, Benjamin, you have made a mess now, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, let's see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Let's kind of keep this going here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to spit them up there. I'll be glad. Ain't no dumb questions, because I probably already asked them all of those. So. I ask Emily dumb questions all the time. She lets she lets me sit down on her paint and stuff. And we we paint it so differently that it, it's kind of it's kind of really it's so so educational for me. All right, let's see. Let's add a little bit of. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's coming together, but it's not right quite where I want it yet. So let's just take some. We'll take a little bit of midnight black. 
and some really brown. Let's kind of add some dark spots. Let's add a few dark spots here and there. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's kind of good. Just a few dark spots here, just to kind of contrast a little bit with those lighter spots. Maybe a little bit more black right there. Maybe a little bit of sap green out there somewhere. Some green out here in this floor somewhere. Here and there, just a little anywhere. Alright, I think I like that. Let's clean the brush. Then we'll, we'll start, we'll blend some of this together. A little bit. So how's your all's weekend going? Mine's been going pretty good. Tomorrow's my wife's birthday too, so... We'll have a good time tomorrow for sure. My kids will be over. We'll do we'll do some fun stuff, I'm sure. Alright. Let's start let's let's blend this out. Let's blend this out. So we're just gonna use a circular motion to kind of blend this out. Blend these colors. Soften the brush strokes out. Not going in any particular go like this way for a while, and then we'll go this way for a while. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. All right, I'm just gonna wipe the end of the brush off a little bit, just to wipe a little bit of color out of it. I'm sure you can do the same kind of a modeling effect with acrylics. I don't paint in acrylics, so I don't really know, but I'm sure you can. I'm also sure I don't know how to do it. Oh, we've got a hair in there. I'll get that off of there. All right, so it's softening up pretty good here. Okay, yeah, that's, that's coming together nice. Smooth out the brush strokes. I'm going to go back over two more times. Really light this way. Three hairs and some air. All right. Let's go one more last time. Maybe two hairs and some air. All right. He had to kiss you goodbye. Start, start thinking about some trees. Let me wipe my hands off. Should put my gloves on again today, but I, once again, I forgot to do it. But that's okay. I have baby wipes, so I'll be, I'll be fine. All right. So let's get a script liner. Maybe a couple different script liners. We'll see. We'll see. Let's take. So. dropping stuff. So uh, this is just linseed oil. So a little apothecary jar works real good for holding my linseed oil. Plus it keeps it pretty pretty clean and it's pretty easy to work with in there. All right so we're just gonna make a little bit of burnt umber. We're gonna make it almost like ink. Almost like ink. All right. I need some more of that before I'm done, but let's just, let's try it and see what we got here. <sighs> yeah. All 
And a lot of this will get covered up before we're done, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. We'll know it's back there. Me and you, though, you will know. It's kind of nice when you're painting these to have a nice unsteady hand. It's not sticking like I want it to, so hang on a second. Let's introduce a little bit more linseed oil to that. Let's see if that helps me out. Yeah, it's a little better. Maybe something over here. A couple things over here. Don't have to see everything. We may add, a couple, add some more when we get a little further into the painting. Let's put a little, just a couple little straight tree limbs in here. Maybe something up this way. Alright, that's enough. That's enough to get us started. All right, let's get, I'll tell you what though, let's add a couple little bit darker trees while I'm thinking about it. A couple little Van Dyke brown tree, tree trunks. I think I actually want this one to be a little more brown. So we'll just kind of make a hybrid here, these two. Do I do this often? Yeah, I paint a couple times a week, at least. I stream a couple times a week. There's a there's like a hundred videos in my library. That you're more than welcome to go watch and send me questions for. All right, I just needed a couple extra trees in there. All right, let's start putting in some foliage, and let's get some. What do we want to? Let's see what we want to do here. Let's get some. Cad yellow. Uh, let's get another brush. Let's get a one-inch brush. Eh, I'll tell you what, let's use an oval brush. So, this is an oval brush if you haven't seen one. You, you don't have to use an oval brush. And I'll show you as we go along how you can use something different. So, let's take some cad yellow. Maybe a little bit of sap green. Alright. Let's just kind of start putting some things in here. Let's start. Let's start right here. I want to keep this soft. I think these colors are jumping out there too much, too crazy. We'll vary some colors as we go. Just add some little things like that. Think back here in the background. Inspiring. Emily said I was inspiring on her cloud on her last painting. She did some be beautiful painting of some bears. I haven't got the official word that she's done with that painting yet. So, um, but it sure is looking. It sure is beautiful. All right. So I'm putting a little bit of this green around over here, along with a little bit of cad yellow. We're just kind of tapping in some different trees and stuff that I see back there. We'll let those treetops pick up, cover the bases of these, these other trees. All right, now maybe, well, let's see. Let's put another, put another 
couple of things in here. Some highlights, a couple of highlights here and there. We've got some bushes on here, maybe, maybe some other trees. So let's put so let's put a couple more trees in here. Well, hang on, before I do that, let's do this. Let's get some bright red out here too. Let's do a little bit of maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson. Maybe, maybe, maybe in here a little bit. Let's just add a little bit of red to this. Kind of painting all off of the same pile, so. Just kind of indicate there's some other things, you know, going around in here. All right, now let's maybe put a couple over here. Not everywhere, but just a few places here and there. All right, let's put a couple more little tree branch things in there. A couple little bit more tree branch things. What did I do with the this? So just pick up some linseed oil. Just want a couple of little undefined things. Some things back here in the back. Way back in the back. Maybe a couple of things right here. Didn't think you were done. I was gonna say the last time I saw the little bear was still trying to decide what he was having. Boo boo. I call him boo boo by the way. Um, just so you know. <laughs> Let's stick a tree right. Let's put a bigger tree like right here. I'll grow it up into there. Yeah, it'll work. Alright, I don't want a lot of I don't I don't want to overpower the painting with a bunch of trees, but let's just kind of Yellow. Maybe like right here. Yeah. I think I could use a little bit of titanium white mixed into this, just a little bit. Just to add a little touch of highlight here and there. So let's get some on the palette. Just the tad. We don't want to overwhelm the anything, but let's just kind of add just a little bit of highlight right, right in here in this part. You'll see why here when we get down here a little bit farther in the middle. All right, let's go back. I think I need some more cad yellow too. I'll tell you what, let's switch to um, hmm, switch up to a cad yellow orange. Or is this medium? This is just medium, I think. This will work. This will work, I think. For what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. That's got us underway a pretty good bit. Let's clean the brush. Take a little bit of a gander here. What we got? Everybody's being so quiet. Oh my goodness. All right. I guess it's because I talk so much. People are so quiet. To me, people are so quiet. All right. So let's see. Let's do... Let's think about that. All right, so let's get some Vendek Brown. Well, let's just start with some. Maybe we'll take some white too. We'll just take those and mix them together. Mix 
think it might be a little bit more white. There we go. Even still, I think it maybe want a little bit. We're gonna put a we're gonna put like a cliff thing in here. So I want this to be a little bit more. I'm gonna to try to put the highlight and the dark down at the same time. Sort of a little marble mixture. There we go. I like that. All right, so let's start doing that. I want this to be too even, so we'll just kind of pull that up there. We, we don't want to cover all this. We don't want to cover up that, all that dark because we, we want the dark is our friend. So we want to. It's going to create a lot of shadows and stuff for us here as we go. So we'll put a little bit darker. It's like a little bit darker. So we're just putting this on with a palette knife. Sort of letting the canvas take what it wants. And then we'll put it back, put it back. Alright, so I'm gonna hit a waterfall. Maybe a double cascading waterfall. Maybe like right here. So let's put pull this down a little bit further. Not a lot of paint there, but it's getting the job done. All right, that's that'll do. That'll do. Hey, Jonathan, I like watching Bob Ross too. Oh, 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 oh! I never, I'm sorry, I meant. <laughs> I didn't understand what you meant. Uh, I'm not too swift sometimes. All right, thank you, Emily. You're very, very, very sweet. All right. Let's put some grass in here. So let's get some sap green. We just want to kind of let's have this darker color in first. And I think you know what? We'll, we'll kind of put some of that down there too. We we'll have some vines like hanging down. grass on over here for a minute. Let me figure out where we're going to go. And let's just kind of see how this highlights. So you might notice I've kind of left this part a little bit dark. I want to create a, another layer. I want to keep that layer kind of clean. Let's put a little bit of like greenish stuff, like maybe like right along here. Just a little bit, a few things growing on the rocks there. All right. All right, so it's starting to come together. You guys can see it pretty good, I imagine, by now. You should know me. You should know me well enough. By now, I know I'm not very swift sometimes. All right, all right. So here we go. Especially when I'm painting. Oh my lord, it's a miracle I can get anything done. All right. So let's get. So I'm just gonna get a fan brush here. I better wipe that knife off, or I'm gonna get paint all over me. I know, right, John? <laughs> what the heck? All right. So let's see. Let's. Let's get a fan brush. Let's just use. Let's use this one. I hadn't used this one in a while. Let's use this one. I'm gonna load it up full of paint. Now let me explain that. Loading it up full of paint. Not just like, like 
pushing the paint into it, you're taking the brush and you're pulling it through and you're moving it back and forth like this as you're pulling it to get all that paint inside of these bristles. All right, let's just kind of, let's start, we can build up to that. So let's just kind of get, start right about here. And then let's take, let's fill the brush up again. And right along there, it's going to run into a ledge. And it's going to kind of all down in here. All right. Now we can kind of fill in from there with the knife. So you see now, all of that brown we put in there and the highlight that works hooked up for us really good right there. I'll cut a little bit of that waterfall off. I didn't really want a Jimongous waterfall, but it kind of came out that way. Let's just kind of... Okay, let's get... Tell you what, I don't really like the way that that's. Let's pull it. Let's pull it over like that. All right. Now let's. Do this. Let's pick up the splash there. I'm going to throw a little bit of this paint, uh, the wrong color, sorry guys, hang on a second. We're going to pick up this little bit of that Payne's Gray and mix it right here. Let's do this though, before we do that, let's pull, let's pull a little bit of reflections down. There we go. Now we can kind of pull some of that color. Be real free with the brush like that. This is just titanium white. There's just a touch of paint gray in it. Okay. All right. So if you're in, if you're tuned in, stay tuned in until we get a little bit later. We're going to talk about how to how to get this painting for free. All right. So let's get let's see. Uh, still need to brush clean one more time with feeling. Oh, thank you, Emily. All right, all right. Let's get. Let's put some. Uh, let's put a little bit of waterline in here. We're just keeping that, keeping that knife horizontal. So we're pushing it across here. We can move it up and down. But if you don't keep it straight, it's gonna, it's gonna look like the water's running off of the page, off of the canvas, and look kind of weird. So I don't know why it looks that way, but it, it just does. All right, let's put a couple of right over here. I want to put a couple of little doodads. So let's put let's put a couple little rocks in there. We'll get a filbert brush, and we'll use a, some Payne's gray and some white on one side. A little bit like put like titanium white on the other side, so I need to get some more out. Hang on. If I if I had palette management, I would I would I would probably be a good artist, but <laughs> I just like paintings just unveiled to me. I don't really kind of plan them out. So right over here in this corner, let's just put a couple little stones. Maybe one big rock like that. Some other little stones. Get a little bit more white. Maybe a little bit darker. Ooh, this paint's gray. Let's try that. Yeah, that's okay. 
cradled bank kind of thing over here. All right. Okay. I think I want to, the last thing I want to do here before I wrap, wrap this painting up and give away my this other painting is let's just let's add a little bit of dark add just a little bit more dark to that to this wall just a little bit so I'm going to take some lamp black now if you use lamp black for goodness sakes be careful with it <laughs> it's really really strong it will overpower everything else that you've ever put on the canvas, so be real careful when you're doing that. I don't see the tube light here, so I'll just use midnight black instead. But it, it'll different lamp black is black black. It is really black. Midnight black is more of a kind of a purplish black, so it's a little more forgiving. Not lamp black. Lamp black will not forgive you. It will not forgive you for your sins. <laughs> it will just really mess you up. You put too much of it on there. So we're going to clean the brush, and then we're going to finish this up. All right. So I want to add some dark in a couple of key spots. So let's do that. Put this brush away. And actually, I think I'll do it with a script liner. And some linseed oil. So I'm just kind of mixing that on the side. On this. I'll come right in here. I'm going to put a dark spot right along the edge of this waterfall. And maybe like a few lines right here. And this dark, this dark will accentuate the rocks. And a few key places. I'm just kind of, kind of dabbing it on there, dabbing it in there. Maybe a little along the edge of this waterfall. All right. All right. All right, so I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm going to change the painting a little bit. So let's do that. Let's take my color here. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we do that, I'm just going to scrape this waterline back off. This is your bravery test. <laughs> All right. Let's scrape that waterline back off and let's just put, let's go back with the color we had here. So let's do that. All right, just wipe that knife off. Take a one inch brush. We're just gonna redo the reflections right here. Like that. Then I think what we're gonna do is take the knife and some dark color. Put a ledge in here like this. This will allow me to add some more layers to the painting. All right, so I got some texture standing up there, so we're gonna wipe that knife off. 
mix up like a little bit of a mirror highlight color. I need more than that though. Now, with that in there, let's take some liquid white. You know, I think I think that's sometimes um, you get going on a painting, and you get you get you get invested in it, and but something just doesn't quite suit you, but you don't know why. So, but you're just like, well, okay, never mind, skip it. And then forevermore, that's just not your favorite painting. So you, sh you really shouldn't do that. Make it. Sure. Make it yours. Make it do what you wanted it to do. All right. And then go from there. All right. So let's just kind of. That looks a little better. Let's make that a little more uneven. Just like that. All right, now let's add some waterline and we'll be done. Yeah, I like that better. Let's put two more layers into the painting. This is broken. Okay. Was it a number one? It's on the fender line, actually, probably. Okay. I'll fix it when I get done. All right. Let's. Go back now and put the water lines back in. So we need a knife and a little bit of titanium white. Let's just do, uh, let's do a little sign. Let's put a little sign in here. Let's, it doesn't have to be anything fantastic. Just, let's put a little sign. So let's get some color. Let's make it a different color. Make it stand out. Let's get some uh, phthalo blue, maybe. Oh, that's a Prussian blue. Mm. This will work. What is this? Manganese blue. All right, we'll throw a little manganese up there with it and some titanium white. We'll just mix a little bit of that side by side. Post out here in the middle of the river. Kind of pointing our travelers that way. All right, let's put a little bit of highlight on that. And we'll throw a little bit of dark lineage in there. That didn't quite get it. Pick it up. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's fixing it, it's just, I don't know, it's just like that, that still belongs there. All right, <laughs> all right, so before we jump on to the next painting, 
let's talk about this painting. Let's give it away. All you have to do is like, click like on this video. Um, I hope you'll click like on the page as well, but click like on this video, share it to your friends and your group, and we'll take all those likes and shares and pile them up into a pile, and tomorrow we'll draw a name. If you live in the United States, we will send you snail mail, a painting for free. It makes, it makes art very accessible. Let's, let's scratch a few uh, little tree branches in here like that, maybe. Oh, this one done. What do you say? Very good, Nancy. Thank you. You have a chance to win. You have two chances to win. All right. So let's take last week. I think the odds were like only 30 to 1. That was pretty good. So, all right. Hang on. I'm going to get another canvas and we will do a mountain scene. Hang on. Canvas, what do you say? This is a what is this? This is a 12 by 16. Yeah. Let me clean off my let me clean off my palette a little bit. We'll get busy. Family, did you see my neat little uh, linseed oil apothecary jar? It works, it works really cool. Alright. So if you didn't see it earlier, we did a video earlier this afternoon, it's in the library, on how to make liquid clear. We'll be using that today, in just a moment, to, uh, going on this black canvas, do a little mountain scene, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Not all, no, but, um, I like painting on black canvas, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, you can do things on black canvas that you can't do on white canvases. Plus, uh, well, matter of fact, let me show you what I mean. Hang on a second. Hang on just one second. So here are some other gessoed canvases. So this one's gessoed orange. And this one's gessoed blue. And this one's gessoed kind of a brownish color. And uh, and then the one that I just painted was done on half and half, half white, half well about one third black and two thirds uh, two thirds one third black and two thirds white. So. It can be just white. Things are a little bit in disarray today because we're getting ready to expand the studio here, so it's kind of a kind of a mess at the moment. But I wanted to be sure I had a I got a video out to you guys today. So all right, hang on. Let me do a transfer to a new clean palette paper. Move my paint, which will take about 60 seconds, but I still have to do it. So hang on. So let's keep all of that. We'll use that maybe. I don't ever throw any paint away, but I paint so often that I don't, my paints don't dry usually, so a bit of that. Well, I don't see any bright red, but who knows? Maybe I'll have some bright red in this one. Burnt umber. questions? Please feel free to ask all the questions. Um, 
what you would want. That's what I'm here for. I mean, that's the reason I do this. Um, I don't give lessons for money or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm just happy to help anybody that wants to learn to paint. All right. I spent a lot of my years uh, after somebody told me I had no talent, not painting. Uh, until I went to a Bob Ross class, and then I just couldn't stop painting after that. This is my, I don't know, I'm, I'm up around 325 paintings, 325 paintings, something like that. So, I've done a lot of paintings. But I hope to do a lot more. All right, I think we're clean and ready to go. So, let's do it. Uh, so, this time, I think we'll do like a night scene. We'll put some mountains in here. So, if we're going to do that, let's put... Let me think about that. Let's get some. Tell you what, let's do something that you I know you won't have seen very often. This color that I'm about to put on the canvas, I'm gonna put some liquid clear on here, but I'm also gonna put a gambling color. Um, that's the name brand. It's called Thalo Turquoise. Beautiful color. I discovered it. Um, I don't know, maybe six months ago when I was at a an art, an art store. Um, they had a show going on, and it was like buy five and get two free or something on gambling paint. So I bought that color just to see it. If I liked it at all, oh my gosh, I really did like it a lot. All right, so let's do this. All right, so we got some liquid clear medium. There's a video on how to do this. What do you mean you don't have no talent? Do you, oh, wait a minute. My favorite brand of brushes. Hmm. You know, it, it almost depends on the brush type. Um, let me explain that. Uh, in, one, in the one inch brush line, without a doubt, I like the Kevin Hill brush the best. Absolutely the best. Um, they, I've had them for a while. They, they have a nice spring to them. Um, they clean up well. Uh, they lay down color just marvelously. I just love them. Love them. Uh, and I'm not a paid promotion for Kevin Hill. I just happen to like those. Fan brush wise, I like Bob Ross fan brushes the best. But I've used a variety, a wide variety of them. Um, in in script liners, probably Brandon Thomas makes a, one of the best script liners that there there is. Brandon Thomas art. Uh, for filberts, see I told you made a difference, <laughs> depends what kind of brush you're talking about. Uh, for filberts, it doesn't, I think the, I don't know what brand is this, I have more of these than any of them, so I guess I like these the best, but I don't know what the brand is. Oh, here it is, it's uh, Windsor & Newton on filberts, and then uh, on flats and rounds, I, it doesn't matter because I, I really don't use flats and rounds a lot in, in the way that I paint, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter much to me. All right, so I prefer, I guess, since I use a one inch brush more than about anything, and between that fan brush and filberts and the knife, I'm a flat kind of guy. What does liquid clear do? Okay, let's talk about that. Liquid clear. It's going to be a medium. I'm going to put it on a brush right now. We're going to put this on the canvas. Actually, you know what, though? I think I'm going to take liquid clear, put it on over here on the palette. And then I'm just going to mix it with the thalo turquoise as I go. I'm going to cover the whole canvas in this turquoise. Thalo. It makes the canvas wet and slick so that you can make your colors blend really well. Um... And I'll show you in a minute. Well, actually, let me show you the difference. Let me see if I can just show you the difference on it. I have another canvas on here. All right. Here it is. It's 11 by 14. So let me muck up. I'll muck up this canvas, and then I'll come back to this one here in a second. So let's let's use this canvas. It's it's got a coat of black gesso on it, and I'll show you the difference in. So, this canvas, I'm going to need some titanium white, though. 
So let me just stop my other painting and talk about this for a minute, because that's a good question. And, but it's it's really, and it's one thing to say that it's wet and slick and show you that, or talk to you about that, but it's another thing to show you. So let's just take some white on a filbert brush, all right? We just got this much paint white on a filbert brush. And let's, let me hang on a second, let me move this around a little bit. Tighten that up. Hang on a second, guys. I want to get you a nice close-up to this. All right. So, this canvas is dry. There's no, no medium on it at all. So when I go to, to pull this paint across the, the palette, you can see how... Can you see... Let me move it closer. Can you see where it's leaving some things behind? It's not... It's, and so if I pull another color along that, let's pull, let's get some red on here. Okay, now, and then I take those and I want to blend them together to make kind of a pinkish color as they fade together. Kind of rubbing it and rubbing it, rubbing it. Kind of blend it, you have to just kind of scrub it in there, right? So you can see it. Hey, Diane. Okay, now let's let's do the same kind of a thing with liquid clear. Well, I need a towel. There we go. All right. So let's get some liquid clear on the brush, and let's let's see. Put some on this. Put some over here on my little miniature palette. All right. <laughs> Put some liquid clear on the brush. I'm gonna throw a little bit of titanium white on that. And then we'll pull this across. Can you see how much smoother that it is? Can you see that? So let's do some let's do the same thing with some red. See that? Can you see that? So now, using the same brush, it's very easy to just to just blend these colors. Look how look how easily they pull together like that. So, now, you can get too much liquid clear, and I'm going to talk about that when I do my other painting, but that's really what it's for. It's for blending blending paints. It's, it's another surface prep, if you would, but it, it, you're blending paint, and it helps you, to, uh, it helps you to, to blend much more easily. So, that's the main, that's the main thing for it. All right, I'll clean that, I'll clean that later. <laughs> Have any other questions, just shoot them to me. All right, let's go back to this. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, I was putting... Uh, Put my color on there. All right, let's keep doing that. Hang on a second. Let me just put everything back. Everything's kind of squished right now as we're remodeling here in the studio. All right. So we're just going to scrub this in. So you can see, you can see that this color is very potent. It's mixed with liquid clear and we're scrubbing it on here. Now I could just brush it on, like really, just get a bunch of it and brush it on there, but boy. Well, that caused you problems because, believe it or not, you can get so much liquid clear on your, you can get so much liquid clear on your canvas. It'll make your paint, it'll make your canvas so slick that the paint will just slide right off of it. Literally, it'll just run right down the canvas. So, you don't want that. At least not usually, you don't want that. So... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on here, you probably can't see a whole lot yet, but it'll start, the next, the next thing you're going to see is how, can, how colors pop off of, just pop off of a black canvas. And then, I'll tell you then, uh, now, that the painting that you get when you finish with a black canvas, that the painting will change its look. Every time the light in the room changes it. So, I know, wouldn't it? Imagine you just, you're just painting along and suddenly you're mounting your paint up here and you have like a landslide. It just slides right off the canvas. It's horrible. <laughs> so, once you put your liquid clear on there, 
The next thing you want to do is go back and wipe some quickly clear off. Now, the cool thing about this is you cannot mess this up. You cannot, just cannot, wipe all the liquid clear off the canvas. But you can see that I did wipe a bunch off. All right, so, okay, let's get busy now. Let's get, let's get a painting going. So we're going to cover a lot of things here. We're going to talk about, we're going to do some clouds. M, M likes clouds, so we're going to do some clouds. Emily, Emily and I are bestest buddies. Uh, we feed off of each other paint-wise, so, and meanness-wise. We're both really, really mean. She's mostly meaner than me, but I, <laughs> I'm just teasing. She's not really very mean. Okay, let's, she tell you she was mean, though. All right, so let's start off with, we're going to start in the background, and we're going to start in the very, very farthest thing away. So, at nighttime, what is the most very far thing away? What's farthest away that you can see in the nighttime? Even if you're in the mountains, what's the farthest thing away? The sky, right? <laughs> I'm going. I want to paint one. The evil queen. The evil spider queen. Don't forget that. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, there's nothing evil about you. All right. <laughs> well, okay. There's there's some there's some mischief about you, but all right. So now I don't think I want to use that brush. I can't show you. I can't demo with that brush. So hang on a second. I can work real good with this fan brush, but I, I don't want to really. That's not going to show me. That's not going to show you what I want you to see. So let me switch to a larger fan brush. So I'm going to go back to this brush. What is this? Like an eight, probably. It's a six or an eight. All right, so we're just going to put some liquid clear on this brush. We're going to wipe it off, but we're still going to leave this brush pretty loaded. Now this paint, this paint is, <laughs> yeah, it's 50%, that's right, stars. This is 50% titanium white and 50% linseed oil. Now, we're going to hold it back from the canvas, and we're just going to take our fingers, because we like to finger paint. We're going to do some more finger painting in a minute, but we're just going to stand back from the canvas, and we're just going to flick these stars into the sky. And the Lord said, let there be light. Now, the farther back you hold it, the more scattered it's going to be. So, if you want to make a constellation, like say, like right across here, I think I do, I think I want to add a little bit of blue. Just a little bit of blue to that. Yeah. I'm going to flick a constellation. We're going to hold it real close. We're going to create a constellation right here. Okay, so that's how you make stars. And once you master that, the next step is free. That's also how you, that's also how you paint snowflakes. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay, let's see. Let's get some, let's get some regular titanium white. First of all, let's decide where we want to put. All right, so we've got a constellation on this side. Let's put the let's put a moon over on this side. All right, so we need a we need a light source here. So let's just get let take some titanium white, flatten it out on my palette. And then I'm gonna rub my finger in it, kind of roll it around in a circle. Marion Dutton calls this getting my motor, getting your motor running. All right, now you'll notice there's no peak. See how there's no peak sticking up? You don't want that because if you have a peak sticking up, it's gonna leave a peak on your moon. That's just not good. All right, and you just have to rub it out. All right, so let's put the moon, say, maybe right here. Now you're beginning to see the titanium white showing up on that turquoise. You see that? Very good, Cheryl. I'm glad to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that. Okay, now we're going to do it again. Take my finger off and go right back to the same spot. One last time. This time I'm just going to tap it a little bit because I want to create like a little bit of, you know, the shadowing part of the moon. Now, uh, talk about something that I'm not doing but that you can do. When you get ready to put a moon in the sky like that, if you want to, 
you can use that background color that's on there, or you can add back different background colors and just make it lighter, like a light blue, and then just get darker and darker and print ring, paint rings around the moon. Make it out. That's kind of a cool effect. Rain Dutton has a really good video about that on uh, YouTube. Maz Art is her her channel. She's she's pretty good. She <laughs> she's really good. All right. Let's put some clouds in. Let's put some clouds in from a, from a, my best girl here. Let's go. So we're just going to take this fan brush, put some titanium white in it. Now some of these clouds will get covered up later. That's fine. So let's take this. I don't want any great big giant clouds, so this time we'll just kind of tell you what. Let's go like I'm just making little circles. I was cleaning my fan brush the other day. My other fan brush like this one. <laughs> and I went to went to pull the wipe it off with a towel and I pulled and I got this instead. I pulled the head right off my fan brush, so uh, that was an old fan brush though. Alright. Okay, so let's just I want to blend this out some. So let's do that. You can't person it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. All right, let's go. We're just going to, we're not going to try not to touch the top, but we're just going to kind of blend this out a little bit. Little circles, little circles, little circles. And you see, our we just kind of incorporated those stars right into the into those clouds. Now, now I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to that. Just a little, I don't want a lot of highlight on this one. Just a little bit of highlight. So let's kind of, the moon's over here, so we want the highlight to be right like that. Good Lord, Benjamin. What have you got on the papers? All right. So I want to keep the highlight toward the stars. All right. And then I think over on this side, we're just going to have like a, a little, a little doodad, a little doer, just a little doer back in the, way back in the background. Something like that. There you go. Okay, Em. You're missing half the cloud. What the heck? Here. I pulled it up too close a while ago, didn't I? Back it back up. All right, there it goes. Now let me tighten this so you guys can see better. There you go. All right. So we just got a little doer here because we're going to put some mountains in here. So let's do that. I think I'll do that. I'll use a knife. And let's use... Let's take some, let's make up a dark color here. So let's just kind of, I don't want something that's going to be clashy. So let's get some, let's take some Van Dyke Brown. I used them in the last painting. I'm going to clean this knife off. What a mess that knife is. All right, let's get, let's get uh, some Van Dyke Brown and some Lizard and Crimson and some, thalo, and some Turquoise color. Let's mix all that together. Maybe it's dark sienna. Mix all that together. All right, let's make a pretty good pile of paint here. Now, there's there's a couple of different ways I like to paint mountains. Uh, Bob Ross um, does his mountains with a knife most of the time, and I like to, I like to do that, but I also like to paint them with a brush. Okay. So, but I'll tell you what, let's, let's paint this. Oh, today we'll do this with the knife. If you want to see how they're done with the brush, look at my, I think it was the last video I did. We did, we did some with a, um, a, a, a 
uh, not with a knife, with a brush, with a filbert brush. I'll tell you what, I'll put this big mountain in here. Then we'll put some smaller mountains in, I'll use a brush. How's that? All right, let's do that. All right, so let's just kind of start to draw this in here. We're just using a knife. Just I'm covering up those stars back there, and that's okay. I want my knife, my new mountain to be a little more rounded like that. Okay, let's see. Maybe like... Push that mountain back in the back. Maybe this one bigger. Maybe this one, I'll tell you what. Let's make this mountain bigger. cover up like part of that cloud and that'll give us some distance on that and then we can have a smaller mountain back here okay so can you guys see the outline maybe not let me see i don't know if i can get it where you can see it though can you see that there we go if i get a reflection on it all right so let's take let's take that first and decide a little bit about how we want the slopes to be because really what we've painted is the outline of the mountain let's go ahead and just put some more mountain ranges in here let's just kind of Who knows, maybe this would be the biggest mountain. Now, when you're making your mountains, try to make them, make, don't make all your mountains pointy, because if you do, you're going to look like a, a dragon tooth or something. I don't know what that, it, it'll, it'll look pointy. They'll, they'll be pointy. And that, that's, there are some pointy mountains in the world, I'm sure, but you don't, you don't need any pointy mountains in your picture. Okay, now, this is the fun part, or part of the fun part. It's all fun, actually. <laughs> Let's just take this, and we can kind of play with this. You can take this color. We're gonna, I'll use a one-inch brush to do this. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. We're going to take this paint and pull it down. And in doing so, we're kind of defining what, how we want the slopes to be. So I can decide by pulling it, this mountain can be in front of that mountain, or this mountain can be in front of that mountain, however I decide I want to do it. Or I could put that mountain in front of that mountain. Have each mountain be successively in front of the next mountain that comes along. But I think for this one, I'll push that one back in the back. I want that one back in the back. I think I'm going to kind of erase that mountain a little bit. There we go. I'm going to kind of turn it into a slope. There we go. All right. Okay. So we got the moon on this side, so the highlight's going to go on the left side. Now for you, it's going to look like it's on the right, because Facebook posts all of our videos backwards for some reason. So let's just kind of make this slope more... slopier. And maybe like, more like that. Okay, I'm just going to rub this color out. Alright, there we go. Okay, now you're going to start being able to see some good stuff real fast. Cheryl, the reason that that, I'm pretty sure, I talked to some people about that. It's got to do with the bandwidth on your computer, on your internet. The first thing that they start to sacrifice when your speed's down a little bit is volume. So we did a sound check. We did a couple of different sound checks over the last couple of days, and then we did one today before we started, and, and uh, we got we get good on our sound checks. So it's on your end, kiddo. You need to turn it up. Turn up as much as you can. All right. Now, sometimes I am mumbling. That's true. But not today. Not today. All right. Let's go. Let's take... Uh, let's get some titanium white and some blue. Some of that blue that we had, that turquoise color. We'll do the... We'll do... Um, let's do the... Let's do the reverse... Let's do the reverse shadow first. For every... For every bright spot on your painting, there needs to be a shadow to match it. That's a, that's a, that's, if there's one thing you can have go wrong, that's probably it. And I see it a lot. People, their paintings come out and they, they are, the colors are gaudy. And they're gaudy because they're, they're not just not, they're not taking it, without dark, you, you can't see the light. The light doesn't come out the way that it should. So, make sure you use, so we've got one color on this mountain already, this is like really super dark color. And now we're going to put this color on to make it 
put the reverse side of the snow fields on here. So we're just putting like a, I don't think you can see that very well, but there's a small bead of paint on here. It's, the knife is a little bit, looks a little more covered because I just, I just uh, mixed up the paint. But I'll show you in a second. So this is the reverse color. This is the back side of the mountain away from the away from the moon. I'm gonna leave a lot of that black on there so it kind of gives us our shadows. Well, thank you, Diana. Okay, now we're going to put the front side, the front side color on. So it's just titanium white. And we'll just start over here. Ugh, picking up a lot of color. So I've got, okay, so now can you see how, how dark that is right there? That's my fault. I need to just take some of that paint that's on that mountain for the background color and push it off. I got too much paint, too much paint on the canvas. So when you're painting wet on wet, it makes it really hard to stick. If you're wondering, look at this paintbrush. It's just too much paint on there. Now, if you can't get it on the paintbrush, just scrape it off. It, it's not that big a deal. And I was just talking and I just forgot to do it. So it's the same problem over here. So we'll probably have to do the same thing when we get over there. We'll see. All right, so this titanium white's very thick. So let's just kind of see what we get now. Okay, let's let that paint break. Let the canvas take what it wants. And it'll give you the rest back. Swiping the color off the knife. Picking up some more paint. A little bead of paint. I think I want this slope to be a little farther out. So we'll just kind of, what I mean by that, I don't, I want this part to like be more like this. See there? You can you can take it and move it all around. Like, say we want this slope out here. We want this slope to come all the way around. Just move it around. Just move it around like that. And curve it right around there, just like that. That's all there is to it, guys. All there is to it. Don't get don't get caught up in thinking you're gonna make a mistake so you can't do it. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't do that. That's really bad. That'll probably hold you. The main thing that'll hold you up from painting is yourself. All right. Let's go on here now. Let's finish up. Let's finish up a couple mountains right here. We got some trees and stuff over here. So not those guys over there. I'm not too worried about them, but they're okay. They look okay. All right. Let's take a one-inch brush with just a touch of titanium white on it. We are, we are. You're absolutely right. We're just gonna tap some tap some fog in here. Um, we're gonna take some white. I want to put some water here. The color's really dark, right? So we're just gonna take some titanium white and use that to our advantage. I'll show you how to do that. How to make some moving water just using white, along the, with the color that you already have on the canvas. <clears throat> so I'm using a just a tad of paint. 
we're just going to go right through here and we're just going to kind of Voila, look at there, look at all that water. We're gonna cover some of that up, but. If you wanted, you could just stop right there. So if you think about this, now think about it. Um, if you watch Bob Ross paint, he takes a white canvas and he paints dark blue over it, and we're taking a black canvas and painting white over it. And voila, it's as simple as that. And then you got motion in there, you got movement, you've got depth built in there. So it's really, really easy to do. Just do it. All right. Let's put some put some trees in. What you say? What you say? What you say? So we'll stick to that kind of stick to that color scheme, I guess. Why not? So we could put some. Well, maybe we we'll use a little bit of green. Let's get some. I have any sap green left from last time? Yeah. All right. There's a little bit of sap green over here. So we'll take some sap green. And we'll take this blue we're using. We're just gonna make a bluish green kind of color. We're gonna go, we're gonna leave that fog up there. But we're gonna come right in front of this fog where this dark patch is. We're just gonna kind of tap in some trees. You want to kind of keep your brush moving up and down when you do this because all, you don't want all your trees to be the same height. So I'm mixing this turquoise in with this with the green. We're kind of sticking to the same color magic and it just kind of works itself out. Gives you a nice consistency on the color wheel too. So we're just pulling this brush down, down, down. Just pulling it down. You don't have to use a fan brush to do this. You can use a one-inch brush to do it too. Matter of fact, you can do almost any stroke with any brush. If you just take a, take a little while to practice. I'm just adding some color because I'm going to pull this, a lot of this down. Now I'm going to take that color and I'm just going to mix a little bit of a darker, a little bit of brown with it. And mix it in here, right around here. I don't need a lot of that, but I do want some darker color for the shadow part when I create the reflection. All right. Oh, yeah, not, not liquid black. Liquid black, something totally different. That will really mute your colors. If, you want, if you're trying to create a painting and you want the colors to be muted, use liquid black. But if you want, your, if you want them to pop off, like Emily said, she told you what it, what it was, so she's right on the money. Okay, let's pull this down. Da -da 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 pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Got those trees off in the background. Let's put some. Let's put a little bit of. Let's put a little bit of. Let's put some fog. Let's put a little bit of fog in there before we proceed. I'm just come on here. Well, maybe this is not fog. Maybe this is like a little snow bank, kind of a thing. Just insinuating there's some snow back there. Now, so I'm gonna take this turquoise. I'll tell you what. Let's put some water. Let's put a water line in just to make just to make the water line show up real quick. Because once I start putting this other stuff in, it probably won't show. Some of that water line will get covered up. Keep your keep your knife horizontal when you pull it across there. Because if you don't, it's gonna make your water kind of crooked. It's gonna look like it's kind of running off the canvas for whatever reason. You can move it up and down. 
make water lines anywhere you want like that, right? But uh, just like that. And if you got some texture and you don't want it, just rub it out just with your finger. Or you can just rub it out with a brush. It don't matter. It don't matter. Oil paint's, oil paint's friendly about that. Okay. So here, look. I'll just take a brush. Rub some of that out. All right. Now, so we're just going to create right here. I'm going to create some land. I think, I think I'll come up a little bit. I think I want to come up a little bit. I think I'll come up like all the way up to here. And maybe like make this slanty. All right, so let's, let's put some trees in. Oh, my favorite thing, trees. I love trees. Goodness gracious, I get going on trees and sometimes I can't stop. It's just, they're just beautiful. All right. And I'm a gardener. <laughs> Emily will vouch for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stoner, cold, hard gardener. So, uh, I love trees. I just love trees. They love me back. So, that's all I care about. All right. So, I'm just going to mix some of this sap green with some of this titanium. No, I'm just sap green with uh, some of this turquoise. Let's put a tree. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's put, let's add some brown to that. And let's just put another row of just the trees. How about that? Somebody must have stepped on that one. That one's crooked. I like crooked trees. You know what happens to straight trees, right? You don't know what happens to straight trees? They get turned into telephone poles and they never end up in a painting. All right, so. I don't want your trees get get mutilated. All right. Now, so with those trees, way off out there in the distance, let's get the paint off my hands. Here's something else. If you don't know, if you haven't seen me before, I use baby wipes to clean my hands. It will clean the oil paint right off of your hands. It's so easy and so gentle. Not to mention, when you're done, you smell like a baby's behind. I mean, how can you beat that? Okay, <laughs> let's take some titanium white and a little bit of that same color, but mostly that. And let's just kind of insinuate these trees a little bit in the distance. Bob Ross is, is awesome. He, he really is. You should watch Emily Jean Paint. She's on a, a channel called Little Painter Girl. She does. She's she's ASMR. She is just like mellow when she's painting. It's her mellowest time. All right, so I'm just going to take some white here. I'll take some white here. Let's try that again. I'm just going to tap in some of this color. Now we can start. Let's talk about. Let's talk about snow. People are scared to death of snow. It's so hard to paint. They say it's. But I tell you, it's not. It's not hard. I'm gonna show you how hard it's not in just a second. Let's get some titanium white. Did I use it in our last two? I might have. If I do, I have to get up and get another one. Well, no, I still got a teeny little bit left. I'm going to need more than a teeny little bit, so I have to get up at some point and get some more. But Let's talk about snow. So I'm going to put a snow bank here, and we're going to put a tree on top of that, all right? So let's just, how do you paint snow? Ben, how do you paint snow? I've heard it's so hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. Here, here's just how hard it's not. 
that's going to hold this down so I can push on this brush. Can you guys see that okay? All right. We're going to take, we're using a one inch brush. We've loaded it by pushing paint into the brush. Like, I can't show you with paint in it, but let's try it again. Uh, it wouldn't be one inch brush. Let me get another one inch brush. Here's another one inch brush. So this one inch brush, we're taking the, we're, we're pulling the brush through by pulling the paint like this. Pulling it and pushing down on the brush. Flipping it over, filling it again by pulling it. And then we're taking the brush and we're pushing it. Pushing it into the paint. Pushing it into the paint. And that'll give you an edge on the end of the paint. So now, you can, you can probably see that edge. Can you see it where it's just kind of edged up? It's pulling a little bit because I've been sitting here talking, but it's creating this edge. You can use that to tap snow, snow, like snowy bushes in. You can just tap, tap, tap. Like that, and tap some bushes in. Turn the brush a little bit to its edge and tap a little bit to taller bushes in like that. And voila, there it is. Now, if you want snow on the ground, you just kind of take your brush load the same way and then just pull it. Just pull it. That's not hard. It's not, but we heard it was hard, and it's not hard. You can just pull it like that. I'm going to clean this brush. We're going to do it again. I'll do another stroke just to show you. Take, the, take it, and we'll pull it this way this time so you can see it a little better. So we're just going to pull the brush. Pull it. Pull it. So that turquoise is in the black are creating automatic shadows for us for the snow. Now, if you continue to pull this, it'll continue to smooth out. You'll still have shadows. You'll still have the insinuation of snow. Now, I'm going to show you what else you can do that in a minute. But let's paint a tree in here first. And then we'll decide what we're going to do. We'll decide what's happening on the wet east side of the campus. I know, right? Baby wipes are awesome. Okay, so <laughs> they are awesome. I have... Uh, here where I live, you can buy them at the flea market for like a buck. And, and I have like a whole, I have, I'm, I'm a baby wipe hoarder. <laughs> Some little kid out there that can't have his baby wipes because I've hoarded them all. All right. All right. So we're just going to take a little bit of, a little bit of black. I'm not black. A little bit of green, a little bit of brown. I'm going to paint this first tree in here. So let's take, and let's just make a, a tree like right. Let's put a tree like right here. So we're just going to kind of edge this down. So I just kind of created where I think the tree should kind of be. Loading my brush back up. Lots of paint. You need lots of paint. So there's two types of fir trees that you can paint. You can paint the ones where the branches go down, or you can paint the one where the branches go up. The only difference is, is how you push the brush. So let me talk about that. I'll use a bigger fan brush when I'm talking so you can see what I mean. So the brush is loaded like this. Can you see how loaded up it is? A lot of paint in this brush, right? So we're going to take the brush. Let me move this painting out of the way. I'll show you on this piece of plexiglass, maybe. We're going to take this brush. We're going to bring it in at a little bit of an angle. And we're going to take it and we're going to tap just like that. That's the angle you're looking for. Tap, tap, tap. Same tap all the way down, except what we're going to do is we're going to tap. We're going to pick the brush up and move it like in a Z. Tap, 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 tap. Just move it down. The other way to make the branches go up is rather than push down like that when you're creating it, you push up like this. So you use the edge of the brush and you push up. It doesn't matter what size fan brush you use. It doesn't matter what size doesn't matter what kind of brush that you use. You can use a large brush or a small, a one inch brush, a two inch brush, a fan brush, a filbert brush. It don't matter. Just whatever you're more comfortable with. All right, so let's do it. So we're just going to kind of tap a couple little spaces at the top, leave this tree a little bit open. I need places for my birds to sit. And we're just going to tap, 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 and tap this little fella right into existence. All right, now he needs a buddy. So let's put another one, like say, right here. So now, this is, now the cheese gets a little bit more binding. Because 
you got a tap, you got all that snow up there on the mountain, right? You could, you could mix up some liquid white with your paint, and, and but the liquid white's going to dilute your color. So it's really quite easier to just kind of take your knife and go like right here and just scrape a little bit of that paint off. So look at how much paint we pulled off of there. It's a pretty good bit, actually. All right. Maybe, 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 maybe a little bit more. Let me wipe that off. Let's pull a little bit more off, like, right. All right. Now. Now then. Now let's tap this tree in. Tap, tap, tap. So we're going to bring this tree a little farther down the canvas. And by doing that... We'll put it in front of that tree, the other tree, right? We'll bring it down like right there to the edge of that snow. All right. Maybe put a little couple bushes in here just for heck of it. Kind of flip that up. Kind of create grasses. A little bit of bushes and stuff right there. Maybe a little bit more darker. Darker, darker, darker. Dark is your friend. Don't forget that. Okay. Now, just to create a little more interest in the painting, we'll put a trunk. So. Here's a good way to remember about painting your trees. Paint your trees in, in three levels. The back, the middle, and the front. It's easy to remember. It's real easy to do. So let's get some... I uh, probably won't need cat yellow because it's winter time. So let's just get some liquid white out. I can use the liquid white. Where did it go? I'll be so glad when I get my studio redone, finished. All right, so we're gonna take some liquid white and a little bit of that turquoise that we used earlier. And we'll use that as the reverse. So, oh my, I could have picked a different, better place to put that tree, I reckon. Because now, now the shadows are gonna change sides. So, all right, let's just kind of tap this, tap, tap. And don't get carried away with your highlight. Don't. Don't put a ton of highlight on. That probably one of the major things that people do that causes their painting. They're, people ask me a question like, "What's wrong with this? How come this doesn't look like yours?" It's just, thank you, Amy. It doesn't look like yours. Mine didn't come out like yours. Well, it's because you got too much highlight. Way too much highlight sometimes. So just be careful with that. Just a little reason it's called a highlight is because it's just a highlight. It's just a highlight. Okay. There we go. Alright, at this point, we're getting, we can bring the painting forward again. So let's do that. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see. Let's, let's do... Let's, let's level this ground a little bit. So let's just take... Uh, what brush? I don't know. Let's take a one-inch brush. It's a titanium white. I'll pull this out to me just a little bit. Let's just pull this landscape out a little bit farther like this. Let's just continue with that. water out here or out there we want to deal with that a little bit so let's make it what say we make it a little bit frozen so hey by the way have y'all seen that movie i have never seen that movie hey selfie i am, i'm so happy i'm glad to hear that i hope you'll tune in a bunch i, I just love to help people learn stuff so i'm always learning myself i'm always trying different things i'm never one to kind of I don't try a lot of things two times in a row, so. All right. Let's get, so we've got a, a small bead of paint on this fan brush. I mean, on this palette knife. We're gonna hold this thing level, and we're gonna come out here, and we're just gonna kinda put these ice lines in. But we're gonna push hard on the brush and scrub that color in. 
going to create the texture that we want, but we're going to the, scrub that color so that we're insinuating that, hey, this water is frozen. It's frozen right out here. It's freezing. Smooth this part out a little bit. There we go. All right. Let's carry on. Let's see what else we want to put in here. Let's start what we're going to do on that side a little bit. We're going to put something else right there, but I don't know what yet. I never know. So let's think about what we want to do on this side. So let's put, let's put, I'm, just, I'm trying to think of what I can do to show you some more different techniques. So let's just take some white, titanium white, put it on the edge of this one inch brush like this. So we're going to create this like, I'm pulling it straight through, so we're kind of creating like, we call it a dog paw. See how it's kind of pulled over to the side a little bit. And we're just going to tap our first island into existence, or our first other piece of land over here, like test, tap it into existence. We're just tap, tap, tapping. Like that. Then we can take and make some snow. Voila, we got snow here. Just softening this a little bit. All right. So that was pretty easy, eh? You just kind of... Okay, Joyce. Thanks for coming in. All right. So it's pretty easy. And like in 30 seconds to create our... Hey, Dorothy. To create our land mass on that side, so that's not too bad. Let's take and let's put a tree in there. Let's throw a tree up in there. Yeah, let's make a pretty good sized tree on this side. So we've got a little sap green. Let's put him like right here. Nice and dark. And a little bit more paint. That's more paint to that. There we go. I'm going to put a bush like right here. Kind of tap that color in right there. Now, to add a little on this tree, we're going to, this tree's bigger. And it's a little bit closer than the other one. So let's take. Let's show it, just show it, making this brush off. And I think what we'll do is we're going to show a little bit of that trunk through the thing. So we'll do that. It's a kind of fairly, fairly simple thing to do. Let's take some brown, a little bit of white, pull it across the palette, and make a marbled mix. So if you look here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's try it again. Let me do it a little bit different. So can you see, making a marble mix, we got a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, a little bit of sienna, a little bit of everything in there. So we're just going to take that. We're going to make a couple of pulls right here. Just make a light touch right there. Just to show a little bit of the trunk. Most of that's going to get covered up. That's okay. We know it's there. But, you know, some people will see that detail and they're like, wow, how did you get all of that detail into all that paint right there? All right, let's put some highlight on there. So we've got some titanium white. I'll tell you what, though, before I do that, let's make this tree a little pointier. So let's take and push it point up. Yeah, like that. And sometimes you want to carry your highlight over past the middle of the tree. You can put some other things in here. All right. Then let's go back to use our reverse highlight. Clean that brush off. Uh, let's see, what do we use for reverse? We use that blue and a little bit of that green. Like that. 
So now you got three colors on your tree, and that'll really help set it off. Like that. Let's make use this tap this brush. Then we'll take a little bit of just a little bit of liquid white. Just to highlight some of that like right there. Just like that. Just highlight it right there on the edge. Alright, there we go. Now we want to set some of those ice flows off before we start to work head turn toward the finish line. So let's let's do that. It's a little slight tweak. It's easy to do. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for dropping on. I hope you guys will go. There's a hundred videos in my library. I hope you guys will go look at, watch some more of them. Fast forward through them. I'll never know, <laughs> but that's okay. I hope you enjoy them anyway. All right. So let's take uh, let's take a script liner. So I'm using this number six script liner. I've never used this one before, so we'll have, let's see how this goes. Number six script liner. We're going to take some. Linseed oil, a small little linseed oil container, a little apothecary jar. Get some on that brush. We'll set it over here to the side. I might need it again in a second. And we'll get some. Uh, I'm gonna. I need this actually. I need some midnight. I think I want some midnight black for this. Let's get some midnight black out. Amy, really? Really what? Really like 100 videos? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Guys, feel free to have a ball. Let's go. <laughs> Alright. I've not used the script liner before, so let's see how it does. Let's go on this side first. We're just going to insinuate some dark lines right in here just to kind of offset this shoreline a little bit. Where did it go? I'm just kind of setting this shore, shoreline back a little bit. The script liner. Maybe a little bit under there. Under there. Linseed oil. Linseed. L-I-N-D-S-E-E-D. -E -E Linseed oil. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's for thinning, it's for thinning your paint, or you can thin your paint with it. You can use it to slick in your, your brush or your paint or whatever. In this particular case, I'm just using it to thin the paint down because I'm painting wet, I'm wet, so in doing that, the, the big rule of thumb is that a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So the more layers of paint you build up, the more uh, harder it becomes for the paint to stick. In this case, if we look at layers, this is not this is layers in the painting, not really layers of paint. But if you look here, like we've got, we've got the, the black of the back of the mountain, the blue of the back, blue and white reverse video, I mean the reverse highlight, the, the highlight, the tree colored, then the reverse colored, then the highlight color for the trees. So there's like, and then the trees behind that. So there's like seven layers of paint there that we're stacking paint on top of. So you got to keep keep adjusting your paint thickness as you go. Linseed oil will help with that. Mineral spirits will do it too, but whichever one you use, you got to just be careful because it can it can muck you up really bad. It can really really cause you a problem if you don't get it right. All right. I want a little more highlight on this bush right here. We get going. All right, and then I want to do something over here. Let's figure. Oh, you know what? I think I think I'll put a fence over there. Why not? Let me wipe this brush out. All right, let's put a fence in. Uh, what do we do it with? Let's do it with a filbert. this to go. I want it to be kind of
you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll, I'll look over and see them at some point, and we'll, we'll get them answered. Plus, there's some of the people in the audience that, that have been here before. They'll, they can answer the questions for you, too. There's no dumb, there's no dumb questions. I've already asked all those. <laughs> I was, I've been painting. Uh, somebody asked earlier, how long have I been painting? I don't think I ever answered that. I've been painting for three years. I'm kind of a video talk kind of a guy. I've been to a couple of Bob Ross classes in my time, too, I think. The rest of it's just been painting. The best way to learn how to paint is paint. So there's no better teacher than, than messing up your, on a painting. Because that'll teach you how to get out of it. Because you'll find out that paint is really, really forgiving. All right. There we go. So we got kind of like, that's a good, nice little rail fence there. Let's put some highlight on that. Let's say. Clean the brush. I want to read what Cheryl, hang on Cheryl, I want to see what you're saying here. My hands are not steady. Um, so let's, let's talk about, let's talk about that. So, let's talk about that. Hang on a second. Let me grab, uh, let me move this painting out of the way, Cheryl, because I want to talk about that. Let me get a, let me get a canvas up here. Hang on a second. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out with that in a couple of different ways. So hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. It seems like every paint session I mess up one canvas just to, to answer questions, and that's okay, because here's, here's, here's something you might not know. You can take uh, uh, oven cleaner and just spray it on it, or you can take mineral spirits while it's still wet and just wipe it off with a towel and wash it off with, with Dawn dishwashing detergent, and you're be right back to normal. All right, so let's talk about shaky hands, especially those of us, well, I don't know about you, Cheryl, but I have a little bit of age on me. My warranty ran out a while back, so. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about painting lines. There's a couple of things about painting lines. Um, this is a filbert brush, and when, when you want to paint a line that goes straight down, here's, here's kind of the way that a lot of people do it, I, at least I've always done it. You put your hand on the canvas, and you Pull it down, and as crooked as it can be. What? You're too chicken to go to class. Oh my gosh. Oh, Cheryl, I'm 65, so <laughs> we'll, we'll be just fine. The, you're going to be just fine. All right. So there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, one is you can go down to like the, the Home Depot, and you can buy a little oak dowel rod for like a dollar or fifty cents. So if you got to do some sharp detail, you can lay this on the edge of your palette and lay it on the edge of your canvas. And put your hand on there, and that'll help steady it and make your line. You can make your lines nice and straight, right? That's a way. Yeah, Emily Jean's got shaky hands. And tell them, Emily, it just doesn't matter, does it? It, it just don't matter. Another thing that you can do in straightening in straightening lines. Or squiggly lines. First of all, let me say this about that. There's no reason to straighten all the squiggly lines. Uh, I used to live on a farm, and we uh, I grew up on a farm. So <laughs> we planted fence posts. Most of my fence posts look like that, or like that. And my grandpa would be like, yeah, I don't think you can put that, make anything more crooked. It's the way they are. Um, you put a little too much credence in that, but I can't, ex I don't know if I can explain this or not. So Emily, if I don't say this right, can you, uh, maybe you can jump in and talk about that. Let me zoom this up. If, you, if you've got something like this and you can just kind of sit on the canvas, you can actually, instead of trying to draw one straight line like that, which is a lot easier, some people, uh, I've seen Emily kind of do this, and I, don't, I can't, I don't know if I can explain exactly how she does it, but I'll try. I've been kind of watching her, and this is kind of my guess. She... Instead of making one big long line, she makes a set of a series of smaller lines like that. Does that make sense? 
So she's she's touch 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 touch. I, I, I can't exactly explain it because I'm not sitting like right there in the room with her, but it's amazing to watch her to do that. And since that's like one of the straightest lines I ever drew, that's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe I'm not guessing right. You tell me, kiddo. The other thing is, if, in making longer lines, is instead of putting your hand on the canvas, turn this around. You got to try to keep my hand out of paint a little bit. Okay, there's no place I can do that. Instead of putting your hand on the canvas, keep your hand, hold the brush farther back, and instead of moving your hand like this, move your arm, pull your arm down so that you're pulling it down like this. And then, last but not least, and that, that's a lot, if I'm trying to pull this all the way down, I can't, you can see with my hand, I can't, I just can't pull up the length of this canvas. I just, I just can't. My hand's going to shake. Right? But if you put, put on your arm, and another way is just pull it up in a different direction, whichever direction is the most comfortable for you. When it comes to things like trees, trees are not supposed to be bored straight. Trees that are bored straight are boring, and they're telephone poles for the most part. So unless you're trying to draw telephone poles, most of which those are not straight either, it doesn't make any difference. Or you can take, instead of laying this crosswise, you can lay it this way and run your hand this way. I've done that a few times. Voila. And if all else fails, and it absolutely positively at the end of the day has to be straight, let the paint around it dry a little bit and then tape it off. So, uh, I'll oh, hey, there's my tape right there. So let me show you that real quick. Uh, I can't remember the, the kid's name I've seen do this. But he does it all the time. Uh, uh, it's not Abraham, it's... Uh, Jack Bl uh, no, not Jack Black. Chuck Black. Chuck Black does this all the time. He creates a tape like that, and he gets some paint, you know, on his brush, and he gets some paint, ink, and he just kind of paints it in there like that. And then he just zips the paint off, and voila, it's straight. So, there's lots of different ways how to do that. There's, there's lots of ways. So, um, if you're painting like the boat dock you're talking about, I, uh, I wanted my 2x4s to be kind of straight. It was a painting for my brother. And although usually once they're sitting on the lake for very long, boards don't stay all that straight. You know. So. But, okay, so anyway, that's, how I, that's, that's a bunch of different ways that you can kind of do it. Alright, let me go back and finish this painting before I drop everyone crazy, forgetting what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to take some liquid white on this uh, script liner. And I'm just going to put some highlight on this. I'm just going to put some snow on this fence. Put some snow along this fence line. And you can see, I'm not, you know, this is another place that you might wait. oh, maybe it should be straight. But if you look at snow, it doesn't, snow don't do that. It just lays in the contours. It just, so don't, don't get too hung up on, on straightness. Much like handmade furniture, not straightness is the thing that I think makes antique furniture so beautiful. It's just not perfect. It's not perfect. It, it's got part of the artisan in it. Just put a little dot right there, a little dot right there, a little dot right there, a little dot right there. Now, you, you can do, you can put like, some weeds like I just like this, just scrape them up like that. Put some around the post like that. Or you could do like you could just I'm just doing it with a or you can do it with a fan brush, which I'll show you how to do that. I hope I'm not trying to show you too many things at one time, but I'm just kinda I put this brush, this bush over here, and I forgot to put in this. Poor guy doesn't have any snow on him at all. All right, one last thing I want to show you, and then that'll be it. I want to show you how to add some, some texture to flats, flat snow areas using a knife. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's so much fun. It's the same principle as putting snow on the mountains. So, you know, just try this in the flat when you're, if you're trying, if you're practicing mountains, just try it in the flat on a flat piece and then just
go from there. But I want to add, let's say I want to add some texture here. So I've got a, a little roll of paint on the knife, and I'm just going to take it, and I'm just going to kind of pull it like this. See how it's going to add that texture to that snow? Just add some texture in there. Just gives the snow a little bit more pump. I'm gonna put a water line out there. Maybe the lake's starting to freeze way out there in the middle. All right. Okay, so that's it. Thanks, Graham. How you doing, buddy? Long time no see. All right, guys. Well, listen. That's that's all I got. That's two paintings. Oh, you know what? One last thing. So here's the painting we're gonna give away tomorrow. Uh, got it zoomed in. I can't show you the whole thing. Oh, no, I really got it zoomed in. There we go. All right. This is a 11 by 14 uh, called Out Here. Little mountains with some really open pine trees and one dead tree out there. So uh, we're going to give this painting away to somebody here in the United States. I can't ship outside the United States because I'm paying for it myself. So we will ship it to you free of charge if your name is drawn. What we'll do is we'll compile the names. We as in me will compile the names and we will uh, take all the likes and all the loves and all the shares and all and uh, so if you like it and you share it, you get two chances. And we will just put all those names in. We'll run a random number generator. It'll tell me what number gets it and whoever's number comes up, we will mail you the painting for free. I'll watch though because I'll send you a message. And so if you're not on my friends list, uh, please feel free to send me a friend request. Um, like my page uh, so that you can see when I announce who the winner is because you only have 24 hours to to uh, claim your painting and then we'll send it right to you so I hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday um, and that the rest of your weekend is really good uh, I really really enjoyed having all of you here and I hope you'll come back next time our next painting date will probably be Maybe Wednesday. We might get a chance to do something on Monday, but I don't know. But we'll definitely do something on Wednesday. So hope to see all you guys then. There's a hundred videos in the library, I think, something like that. So you guys be sure to, to go out there and look at any videos you've got. If you have any questions on any of those, I'm, I'm always open to, to answer questions. So keep painting. And don't let nobody tell you you can't. And by Lord, that also includes telling yourself. You're probably our own worst critics. Everybody can paint. If you think you can't paint, come to my house and I'll give you a lesson for free. I guarantee you, you will be able to paint. See you guys.